In this video, I'm going to introduce the uh, the concept uh, and the the, um, the properties of the null value in the in the SQL language. Um, this video is going to be only lecture, so I'm going to go through the, the entire PowerPoint here. There won't be any examples in SQL. Uh, there will be uh, subsequent videos. One that that uses a code example to prove out uh, the way that SQL uh, handles the null value uh, because it's a little bit different uh, than what you might see in other languages, uh, and then. Uh, the second uh, video will cover examples specifically working with null values that appear uh, in various tables in the AdventureWorks database. Um, so diving into the PowerPoint, um, the null value really arises because of a more general, um, uh, more general occurrence uh, with data, and that is for uh, missing and unknown values, which is which is quite common. Um, and so each programming language kind of deals with missing or unknown values differently. Um, and they also mark them or have, you know, different values uh, for a missing value. So in SAS, a missing value uh, for numeric data is a period, um, and for character data, it would be a, um, an empty string. Uh, R has values of NA, um, uh, null, and uh, NAN. I think NAN is not a number. Um, NA, I can't recall off the top of my head. I just saw it the other day. Um, but essentially, they have various uh, values for for data depending on why it's missing, why it's unknown, or why it can't be displayed. Um, and for many applications, when you're doing data analysis, et cetera, uh, the distinction between missing or unknown is usually not that important, right? You've read in your data. Your data is going to be your data at that point in time. You run your model or whatever you're doing. Um, and that data is not going to change. However, uh, when you're working with data specifically in SQL, especially if you're working with it often, um, the distinction that I want to make, and it's kind of a, a fine one, is that in SQL, those tables are, are somewhat live, right? I mean, they can be updated. Uh, values can dis be modified, um, which is why the AdventureWorks uh, database has that modified date field. Um, and so really, you might see a null value in one field for a particular record one day. Um, and then after a table update or however your data is ultimately um, managed, you might see a value uh, at some point in the future. Um, so that really, there's really kind of two types of, of data. You, you're uh, in SQL, you're, you're uh, there are two types of reasons that you're going to see a null. And so in SQL, that null value really means that it's unknown at a point in time. And so it can either be unknown you know, forever, there, there's never a time that you would ever record that value, right? So uh, we'll have one uh, example here on the next slide. And then there are some uh, fields that are blank, right, um, that might ultimately be updated in the future. Um, and so going to the next slide, we'll talk about this a little bit more. So when uh, null is uh, for a missing value, right, a truly missing, never going to be populated value, um, we can think of, uh, for example, the uh, person table in the AdventureWorks database. I uh, recall that the title field had uh, values of Mr., Mrs., um, et cetera, but uh, in, a, in an assignment that you all did, you noticed that there were uh, quite a few null values, right? Um, and so null values uh, for this particular data, data set is, at least the way that I would think of it, is that that title field, when when employee was an employer or customer was filling out this information which includes their first name uh, middle name last name right uh, very basic information usually when you go on the web your, your title field is always optional because not everyone uses a title not everyone cares to use a title so that's ultimately why a lot of those values are null and it, you wouldn't expect necessarily for those those values to be updated in the future um, but there are definitely uh, fields and values uh, and, and tables that you could expect to be populated in the future. So imagine a database of customer accounts um, at a particular snap point in time, right? Um, and so, so we have customer accounts. They have, um, you could imagine any kind of account, a checking account, a savings account, a, a loan, um, or an account at a company, and they might all ultimately you have a field within that data that represents the date that the account is closed. Well, if the date is, or I'm sorry, if the date is null, and that might mean, or that probably means that the account is still open, right? There's never been a, a point or a date associated with the closure of the account because it's never been closed. Um, and then once, once that account is 
close, that value could be updated in the future. Um, and so that's just an important thing to recognize while you're working through um, data in the SQL Server. Um, when, you know, in your future endeavors, um, that those values aren't necessarily null at all at all times. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then to talk about logic systems and why, uh, right, why the SQL null is so different, or not so different necessarily, but but different in a way that can be frustrating and cause errors if you're not if you're not keen on it. Um, or keen to it. And so there, there's, it's really a difference between a two value logic system or a Boolean logic system and then a three value logic system, which is the one SQL uses. Um, so in a Boolean two value logic system, which is the, the one you're probably most familiar with, um, an evaluation of a logic statement can only return two values. It's only it, a, a specific statement is either true or it's false. So it's either true or it's not true, right? Um, and so false, uh, second bullet there, false is always returned if the value is not true. And so the example I show here uh, might go a little bit too into the weeds with some of these some of these examples, but essentially in Excel, Excel will use a, a, a or uses a two value logic system, a Boolean system. Um, so for example, we've got a value, uh, values in the column A. So we have uh, in the first two uh, rows here, 4.3, we have a value and then hello. Um, in this particular column D, we're evaluating the condition in column C. Um, I do, I do kind of specify what the data type actually is within each one of these cells in the value column. Um, but just to, to walk through the first two, right, um, is cell A2 less than five? In the first example with a value of 4.3, you would say it's true, right? 4.3 is less than five. Uh, for hello, um, SQL or not SQL, Excel is is able to evaluate this condition essentially because it's not true. Uh, hello is not less than five. It's a character, so it'll it essentially won't uh, be evaluated numerically. But but Excel also doesn't return an error trying to evaluate that condition, which SQL would, which we'll see here in a second. Um, and then for empty cells, right? These these are ultimately not populated with anything. Um, we see that the both conditions evaluate to true. Uh, so the first one is, is that value less than five? That's true because Excel treats the value of an empty cell like zero. Um, and so, or when it's converted to a numeric data, it's converted to zero. So it's less than five, Excel returns true. Uh, and the second, uh, the second example, I'm basically testing whether the value in cell A5 is a empty string or a blank string, which is denoted by two, uh, two, in the case of Excel, double quotations. In the case of SQL, single quotations. Um, and that is true uh, because the empty cell value is blank, um, which is uh, for, for character data is denoted by a, an empty string. I won't go into the, the bottom two examples. I ultimately did an empty character right in these two cells is denoted with a single apostrophe. So the first one here, when you when it tries, when Excel tries to convert it, uh, to a numeric, it finds that with that single apostrophe there, we've explicitly uh, told Excel that that's a character value. So it will not evaluate it as a numeric uh, field, in which case it returns false here. It returned true in this example when we didn't include the single apostrophe. Basically, this cell is empty. Single apostrophe in Excel will convert uh, any any data to, to character data, and that's why we ultimately get a false in this particular example. So maybe a little bit too into the weeds, weeds on this particular thing, but the point on this particular uh, example with Excel, but the point is Excel only returns true or false. It doesn't return anything else. Uh, it might return an error if you were to provide incorrect parameters to a, to a function or something, but that's a little bit different than evaluating logic. Um, so in a logic system, uh, Going like SQLs, which has three values, three possible values, um, it's ultimately uh, that ultimately means evaluation of a statement I can either return true, false, or unknown, um, and that's really uh, a difficult concept uh, for those who are so familiar with working with the two-value system. Right, it's either true or it's not true. Um, but in this particular uh, language, it's important to recognize that um, that SQL has three possible. Uh, three possible outcomes. Um, and so null values essentially cannot evaluate to true or false. It's unknown. We don't know right now whether that value, if it were populated in the future or whatever that value might be, 
is actually true or false. Um, and that's kind of the way to, to think about why is an unknown. Um, and so in SQL, right, uh, if we were to ask the question, is a value in a given field less than five, uh, this, this uh, result column here would essentially be what is returned from SQL. Um, and I, I do, uh, I will handle, I will basically prove this out with a example code uh, in, a, in a subsequent lecture or video. Um, but if we were to give SQL the value 4.3 and ask it whether it's less than five, uh, it will obviously return true because 4.3 is less than five. If we give it a value of 10, that's false. 10 is not less than five. Uh, if we give it a character uh, value, it will return an error that's a little different than, uh, excuse me, a little different than Excel, all uh, right, uh, because ultimately SQL cannot convert that to a numeric value. Neither can Excel, but Excel at least will handle, if it's a character, it's it's not true, therefore it's false. Uh, and in SQL, it's going to try to convert uh, to, to numeric uh, in order to evaluate the, the condition. And then the last example is the most important one for SQL uh, and understanding the difference. Uh, so if you have a value of null, all right, um, your, uh, it will not evaluate the true or false. Uh, it will essentially be unknown. Uh, it can return a null value. Um, but essentially it is, it is important to recognize that the value is unknown, right? Um, so we don't, we don't know. And in which case it's kind of like a, a null result. Um, so that is, that is SQL's logic system. So what does this mean, uh, in practice? Um, it means that if you don't handle the possibility of null values explicitly within your, uh, logic, uh, it can result in errors. Uh, frustrations, uh, possibly uh, inaccuracies in your analysis, um, and that sort of thing. There are sometimes, you know, sometimes the, the SQL query will return and you don't have any issues on the surface, right? If you don't account for, for nulls. Um, and that's maybe the more dangerous one, right? You, you're doing analysis, uh, making conclusions on data that you might have handled differently had you known that nulls were treated this specific way when you thought maybe they were treated a different way. Um, and then they can also, uh, the, the better outcome is that they result in long debugging sessions. So you're getting an error uh, because there are, are null values, but you're not thinking, oh, that's the reason that I'm getting an error, et cetera. So just important uh, to recognize that, that the pitfalls of not accounting for the null value. Um, and it is frustrating for a couple of reasons. One, um, for folks who grew up in, in the Western system, uh, uh, it, Western logic is is very very boolean, uh, black and white, uh, two value system, right? It's either uh, true or it's not true, in which case it's false. There is no unknown, um, and so uh, that that is a little bit difficult uh, to, for for folks to wrap, to wrap their heads around. Also, if you've been working in languages with the two value logic system, you might be so accustomed uh, to to that that you might um, it might fail to recognize that SQL it, it does it a little differently. Um, and so the practical implication is that uh, most positive logic statements are going to return as expected. If you're looking for a value in a field, uh, so you're evaluating equivalence, uh, you're going to get what you expect, right? If you, for the most part, if you were to search for a, a, a value in the first name field uh, of mark, you're going to only get records where the value of that field is marked. We wouldn't necessarily consider the null values. Um, in that in that uh, in that condition uh, of, of equivalence, but the, the the tricky part is that is that most negative logic statements cause issues when there are null values. So um, most of the time we do consider null values relevant when we're talking about is not true, right? Um, if it's not true, uh, a null value is uh, in some for some analyses that is something we would consider not true, and we want that to be included. Um, but SQL does not return null values when evaluating non-equivalence. 
And so this ultimately can cause issues, um, like I've, I've kind of uh, <laughs> said a few times in, on this particular slide. Uh, sometimes we don't recognize uh, or realize that there are null values. Uh, sometimes we forget there are null values. And then I guess the third one, which we've already said, uh, is that sometimes you forget that SQL handles null values differently. So just important to recognize that with a negative logic statement, if you're saying uh, return all records that does not equal mark, null values are not going to be returned unless explicitly requested uh, from the query. And so um, going on to what you would do in that query, uh, when you're using negative logic and you want null values to be considered as not true, you need to include a statement such as or is null. Um, so um, or a particular field is null uh, would return null values uh, or basically return uh, values that meet that or sorry, return records that have values that meet the condition that, that the value is null. Um, uh, and so that's the, the is null is what you use essentially, uh, or is not null if you're interested in that, is ultimately what you use in conditional uh, statements within a SQL query. So is null will evaluate the true when the value is null, and is not null will evaluate true when the value is not null, right? Um, one important thing to recognize, uh, equals, you cannot use the equals or does not equal null. Um, that syntax will not return what you expect. It will not throw an error uh, from what I've, I've checked, but it will not return, also will not return null values. So important to recognize that we use the is keyword, not an equal or not equal sign when we want null values. Uh, two other uh, useful functions for dealing with or handling null values. Uh, the is null um, takes two arguments, um, and that this one is particularly useful for a select list. Uh, you have a null value, you ultimately want to replace it, displays a different value in the output for null values. Um, so essentially, you give it an input, uh, if that value, a field or, or whatever it is, uh, and then your second argument is what you want returned if that if that field or that that input it ultimately evaluates to null, um, so we could you know ultimately output null values as zeros if that's how we want to do it. The last uh, null if um, is it's it's hard to conceptualize the, the arguments. What you give the arguments are hard to conceptualize, but essentially um, you want uh, this is a, to return null. It's not to handle a null value, but rather to return a null value which is important uh, in one instance that I've, I've used this all the time is when there is a possibility for dividing by zero uh, instead of dividing by zero and throwing an error, in which case you can't run the remainder of the query. Uh, this, this query will actually allow, or this uh, function will allow the query to continue to process uh, and return a null value when you would normally return an, an error for dividing by zero. Um, and we'll talk about that in the, in a subsequent lecture is those specific arguments because again like I said I always have to think a couple times about what um, what what arguments need to be in there uh, in order to get the result that I want um, and so that is the conclusion of the lecture um, and then again uh, in, in subsequent videos I'm going to uh, a replicate uh, the uh, the results or the outcomes uh, from the SQL language uh, in this particular uh, SQL script. Uh, so basically prove out that these are the outcomes that you would actually see. Uh, and then in another uh, video, I'm going to actually walk through specific examples using the AdventureWorks database.